So, okay, everybody, that was fun, but unfortunately the fun is over. Uh, it is time to get into something a little bit more serious. And the, uh, the first serious thing that I want to talk to you is actually something that it goes back to the very first test episode of this podcast. So I'm sure a lot of people might not be aware of this, but in the very beginning, this podcast started off as a series of about 20 or so you know, test podcasts that only ever saw the light of day on Facebook. And the whole purpose of them was just to you know, develop this skill. And by the way, I'm, I by no means perfected it, and I think that's pretty obvious on a weekly basis. But everybody has to start somewhere, and that is where 100 Degrees started. And the very first topic that I ever talked about on 100 Degrees was Chris D'Elia. So, Chris D'Elia, you know, he was actually the guy who made me wanted to start podcasting. You know, he was this comedian that I discovered through somebody that I knew, and I started to, to like him a lot pretty much right away. And he did this weekly podcast, and you know, it was a lot of fun to listen to. But then, a few months ago, some news broke. And basically what it turned out was that for any lack of a better phrase, uh, Chris D'Elia is a creep. And he at the very least was a creep. You know, I mean, people can change. They change all the time. So this is something about Chris D'Elia that can change, but basically that was the news that broke. He had, you know, it started off as, you know, a lot of allegations that basically he had wooed underage girls and you know, try to, uh, to to groom them, you know, to uh, to provide him with, with sexual gratification. And then over time, it just became, you know, a lot of other women came forward and said that he had tried to do the same thing to them. But a lot of them were, you know, as it turns out in the end, I think most of them were actually of age. But there was a lot of ugly behavior involved in it. And it was just, it was an awful look. And at one point, you know, Chris D'Elia, he came out and he actually made everything worse for himself. You know, he came out, he gave the statement, if I recall correctly, I believe that this statement was given to TMZ. And he came out and he said, it's like, oh, well, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, I've had my, um, you know, I've had my issues in the past, uh, but all my relationships have always been legal and consensual, and I've uh, gotten better, and I'm going to continue to be better. Which, I mean, there are, there are many wrong things that you can say in a situation like this, and that's one of them. You know, the whole statement basically kind of inferred that he didn't really have a problem, that he hadn't really done anything wrong, and that he was better than everybody else, and he was going to continue to be better than everybody else. And the fact that he's always kind of projected this, uh, you know, I mean, really, it's tough to say at this point if it was ever for comedic effect or not, but he always projected this very arrogant character out into the world through his comedy and you know, through his, uh, through, 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 just in general, the way that he carried himself. So when a guy with that particular aura about him comes out and says, oh, well, you know, I'm going to continue to be better, that doesn't do it for a lot of people. Uh, especially when you look at some of the specific behavior. Now, there were a lot of things I don't really have that big an issue with. You know, I mean, the guy's, I think he's 41 and he's actually engaged now. As I understand it, his engagement is probably still on, so he's probably past all of this. But if a guy who's in his if a guy who's in his thirties, he wants to go and chase after girls that are in their twenties. And if these girls that are in their twenties, if they're actually into it, well then that's hey, that's just all going on between consenting adults. Society might view some of that stuff in a certain way, but as far as I'm concerned, you know what? It's between consenting adults, it is what it is. I never really had a big problem with that particular behavior. There were other behaviors that I had a big problem with. You know, things like, for example, where he would herd girls into hotel rooms, and then he would take their phones away from them so that they couldn't communicate with the outside world if they wanted to. Okay, that's a problem. That's a problem. And another thing that stood out to me was that he was, it was said that he would take these photos you know, these nude photos that girls would send him, and he would turn around and he would turn them into memes and he would go around and he would show them to other male comedians and they would laugh about them. And apparently it was well enough known that female comedians were all told, it's like, hey, listen, whatever you do, whatever happens between you and Chris, don't send him nudes. And this was why. That was actually the, the, the behavior that I had the biggest amount of concern with. 
Yeah, in my opinion, that is probably the most reprehensible thing that a person could actually do. You know, these women are sending him these photos as tokens of affection. And then he turns around and uses them to humiliate them. That's disgusting. That is the, that's, that's, that's the lowest. That's the lowest form of behavior that I can conceive of. So none of this really went away the way the Crystalia probably thought that it would. And so he had to eventually go away and he's just been, he's been very quiet for a long time now. Actually, probably about six months, maybe more than that. You know, almost complete radio silence out of him. And uh, this week he finally broke that silence. He came back and he put out a video where he basically, he issued a statement. And basically, as I understood the statement, uh, the statement basically came down to this, was that, you know, his behavior back then wasn't something that he was willing to accept. And that really it was the behavior of somebody who was, you know, it just, it became much easier for him to have sex with women because he was famous. And apparently he allowed his behavior to get a little bit out of control. I know that's not a great way to describe that. You know, it's, it, in reality, it is a good deal more serious than that. But one thing that he did say in that... <clears throat> I know that that's not a great way to describe that. You know, what he did was quite a bit more serious than that. But with that in mind, let's just kind of get into the rest of what his statement was. And he talked about how he had been seeking help for, you know, the past several months, getting therapy, trying to figure out how he was going to make these things right. He's saying more of the right things now. Now, I personally don't believe in cancel culture. I don't really believe that any kind of misdeed, well, with the exception of something extremely, extremely, extremely serious, you know, should result in, you know, permanent condemnation. You know, I don't really believe that there are very many things for which a person can, can never be forgiven. Now, as it pertains to Chris D'Elia, I mean, yeah, as a fan, I was really disappointed with him so much that I'm not a fan anymore. But it's not up to me to decide whether or not Chris D'Elia should be forgiven. There are a lot of people out there that he did abuse and that he did victimize. It's up for them. It's up to them to decide if he's going to be forgiven for the things that he did or not. I'm still not a fan anymore. And I'm probably not going to be a fan of Chris D'Elia again. I'm not going to spend any more time listening to his podcast. I'm not going to spend any more money on him. You know, and that's my choice. And everybody has to make their own choice, obviously. I mean, Chris D'Elia is a guy who has made mistakes. He's paid a price for them. And even now, he still does have the right to try to seek forgiveness for the things that he did wrong. He has the right, in fact, I would say the responsibility to correct them. And then he has the right to go out and seek forgiveness. And it's going to be up to the, the uh, people other than myself to decide whether or not he's forgiven. I mean, I think in situations like this where really no crime has been committed, for anybody other than his actual victims to try to be decide whether or not he's forgiven, that's, that's just not the way that these things can work. You know, if that's how we allow these things to work, then our civilization is going to stop working. We'll be giving way too much power you know, to people who might be tyrannically bent and not even aggrieved. So if you're not one of these women who is victimized by Crystalia, I think we should all just chill out, take a step back, let him try to seek forgiveness for, from his victims and let them decide if they're going to grant it or not. 